Let's go to networks. Again, remember, this is where they basically group genes based on any biological connections, regardless of whether they're in the same pathway or not. This score over here is telling you, you could kind of consider it basically the negative exponent of 10, if you consider that a p-value. The odds of getting all these genes connected in our gene list based on random chance is like 10 to the negative 43rd. Yeah. After a while, you start seeing these things and you, like, you do this enough, like now I have contests. With, I have this other guy who does bioinformatics. We have a contest of who, who could produce the highest score in this. And so basically you derive Dean list to just basically, you want things that are just so connected and then you throw it in here. I've actually busted the software because it was just so connected. I'm emailing like, and you do it and you're going, what happened? And they're like, we have no idea, man. You, you just broke the system. I love doing that. Again, if you don't break this software at some point, you ain't, you ain't pushing it. Okay, so click on one. Let's take a look at this. This is cool. Did everybody get the same gene network? I might have put in the wrong. I think you have the same one. It might be just slightly different. So you guys don't, you don't have this gene network? No? Okay. Actually, so here's what happens. As you can tell, these networks and these biological functions are getting, getting updated every day. Depending on when you put your gene list in will depend on kind of what you will see in your final gene list. That some of these relationships get put in later and then you put your gene list in and that pretty network that you thought you had kind of disappears. But then a new one shows up and you're like, oh man, this is so much better. Here's what we can do to this network now. Let's go to overlay. If I hit the overlay, that's the middle one, go down to Molecular Activity Predictor, or MAP for short. What this is going to do is color the line based on the relationships it knows in the literature. Hit Start Prediction. So basically anything, so KRAS is going down, it's known to inhibit PAC1, since the inhibitor's not here, this thing is going up, so this is saying that this is activating PAC1. Does that make sense? Again, this is known to induce SRF, it's going down, therefore it's predicted to be inhibitory. Same way here as well. You know, I started, and this is what you do. So obviously this is a very well-connected gene, you know, network. The fact that I've got this network with all these known biological connections means that I would favor these genes more playing a role in my system than something that isn't connected. Does that make sense? That if I got a lone wolf, right, no gene acts in isolation. A gene expression induces other genes that inhibit other genes, so I expect a gang. When I find something that isn't connected to anything else in my list, what that means is either it's not real, or number two, it's just not very well characterized, and so we don't know the, da the relationships. Here you can see the sauce in here. If you, so somebody Google SOS and stem cells. Is there a lot of stuff coming up? Yes, no, yes, totally. Again, this makes sense. And that if I'm looking at this network, instead of picking these two, if I want to influence these two, oops. if I want to influence these two, I'm not going to try to inhibit both of these. I'm going to affect its effector in our gene list. Again, it's getting upstream. It's going beyond, you know, figuring out 
you know, what are our main players in this? So let's go to our main player page. Godfathers, upstream. Oh, wait. Go back to networks. I'm sorry. Um, let's see. Sell the cell segment. Ooh, that'll be a good one. Click on network number two. Does yours look like this? No. I'll have to take a look. What's that? It was... Oh, wait. So the network description is, I clicked on the one that had a score of 40, cellular function and maintenance, cell-to-cell -cell signaling and interaction, connective tissue development and function. Now, does any of your, your uh, networks have that? Cellular function, cell-to-cell -cell signaling, interaction, connective tissue development. It should have DAB2 in it, um, IQ gap one. We'll straighten this out. Maybe I gave you the wrong gene list. I don't know. I don't think I did. The canonical pathways came out right, didn't it? Right? Your EMT was like the first one, right? And it had a p value of like 6.10 to the negative seventh. Okay. Yeah, something's going on here. I'll, I'll figure it out. Well, again, this is recorded. But look at this network. And you don't have to, I mean, you can see it up here, right? Where's our godfather? <laughs> yeah. GRB2. Big time. I can even color this. Start prediction. There's a lot, it's binding a lot of things, and it's going down. It's also a growth factor receptor. What this is telling me is that in my embryonic stem cells, these things are much higher than our pluripotent. If I wanted to replicate maybe the embryonic state a little more, maybe I overproduce this in my cell type. Because look at all the things it affects. And again, this is complete. What you can also do is you could say, okay, well, what the heck are these things? So I can actually go to overlay, and I can say, let's overlay some pathways. So this is uh, like the fifth one down, sixth one, sorry. The top one, at least eight of these genes are associated with this catherine-mediated endocytosis signaling. You can even click on that. You'll notice when I click on it, it adds that pathway. When I select it, all the genes associated with this pathway are highlighted in light blue. And you can see they're all connected. They're all in the same part of the graph for the most part. Gangs. I see this. I like this. Right? I've got gangs associated with my godfathers. I love it. That means that this is connected. That it never fails. Everyone I collaborate with, they always want to know first thing. What pathways? <laughs> this, is the, this would be the red meat I give them. Oh, it's all Catherine, man. Go, go for the Catherine uh, endocytosis pathway. That's what it is. But you can see here, not only can we do that, but we can also go to build. Now hit your grow function again. Okay, and this, instead of growing from this one, what we're going to do is we're going to do diseases and functions. So click on that second tab. And if you're not on that same network, it's okay. Hit it. It'll show some things that are similar. takes a while. This is kind of cool. 
So not only did I generate a network, I looked to see if there was any overrepresented pathways. Sure enough, I found that one. I'm going to tell you, Catherine, that Catherine mediated endocytosis, that's all about basically uh, the microtubule stuff again. But again, this, this will show you, ooh, receptor mediated endocytosis. This will show you all the functions that are overrepresented. And I can select any of these molecules. So say if I want, what the heck is SCARF 1 and 2, what pathways are they in? And it highlights those functions for you. It's kind of like getting the, you know, the lowdown on all these genes. I could select anything. I could select all of them if I wanted. I could put some of these things into our pathway if I wanted. Why? You see now this is in. We can trim it. We can get rid of stuff. Here is my personal opinion about bioinformatics and this kind of stuff, this kind of analysis, is that I'm kind of, this is kind of my playground, that I play around with the data. This is my typical analyses, is that I get a, a data set like this. I usually, if I can, get a six pack, <laughs> basically sit down and drink beer and like check, just kind of just peruse the entire analysis. And I fill my head up with all like, so right in the back of my head, I got EMT signaling. I've got that, you know, I've got cell movement. I've got, you know, apoptosis. All that stuff's in the back of my head. And then I kind of let it go for a while and then I come back to it. When I come back to it, like something pops, it clicks. No matter what you do on this, no matter how you analyze your data, at some point, my final piece of information to know that I did it right or not is if whoever I'm collaborating with can basically reproduce that on the bench, right? Just like in football. Like, if I was running with the ball and I fumbled and the other team picked it up and then somebody hit him and then bounced off the tuba of one of the band members and came back in and then got fumbled again and then I picked it up and I ran it in for a touchdown, still a touchdown, right? Might not have been an organized play, it might not have been pretty, but it's still a touchdown. Whatever you come up with on this, it doesn't matter how you do it. If it's validated in the lab, it worked. Success, yay. <laughs> Which is very hard sometimes to explain to your collaborator. Like, what did you do? Well, I did this, 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 and you know, and then I did this network, and then I took this other network, and then I trimmed it, and then I grew out of this, and I did this, and, and by the way, I think it's this gene. Usually, you know, sometimes they'll just go, there's no way in hell. That's true. Sometimes they do, and when they do, it usually works. So, again, ends justify the means. Whatever it takes for you to get to that, like, your final, like, ah, this is what it is, stick with it. If they validate it, you're an expert, uh, you've got expert analyses. Okay, let's go to our big guns, upstream analysis. These are